Imagine you're sitting in a room bathed in the soft glow of your screen, the only source of light in the darkness that has crept up unnoticed. The silence around you is deceptive, broken intermittently by the pings and dings of notifications that seem to demand immediate attention. Each vibration, each light-up screen, is a call to the world outside, a world that never sleeps, always speaks, and incessantly seeks your attention. You're caught in an endless loop of refresh, reply, and react, a dance that, while connecting you to the world in unprecedented ways, also ties you to a never-ending cycle of digital engagement. In this modern age, our lives are more connected than ever before. The idea of being unreachable or offline is almost a relic of the past. With a device in every hand and a screen in every room, the concept of silence, of disconnection, seems almost alien. And yet, amidst this constant barrage of digital noise, there lies a surprising power a hidden benefit in the act of choosing what we ignore. This isn't about promoting rudeness or advocating for a hermit-like existence. It's about the selective engagement with the world around us. It's about finding peace in the choice to not respond to every call, to not engage with every post, and to not let the digital world dictate every moment of our day. This power of ignoring isn't a new phenomenon but its importance has become more pronounced in our hyper-connected era. Think of it not as a blanket rejection of social interaction, but as a filter, a way to prioritize our mental health and personal growth over the ceaseless demands of the digital world. It's about recognizing that not every notification deserves our immediate attention, not every email requires an instant reply, and not every social media post warrants our engagement. In the following discussion, we delve into the myriad benefits of this selective disengagement, from the strengthening of personal autonomy to the improvement of mental and emotional well-being, from the fostering of deeper, more meaningful connections to the promotion of personal growth through focused attention. We'll explore how the simple act of ignoring can be a step towards a more fulfilling and balanced life. So, as we embark on this journey together, I invite you to consider your own digital habits. How often do you feel compelled to respond immediately to every ping, ding, and ring? And what might change if you chose, even occasionally, to ignore the incessant call of the digital world? Join me as we explore the benefits of embracing the power of ignoring, not as a means of disconnecting from the world, but as a way to reconnect with ourselves. Section 1 the autonomy of ignoring. Imagine you're at a crowded party, the kind where the music's so loud you can feel it in your chest and everyone's trying to talk over it. You're trying to have a meaningful conversation, but all around you, other voices compete for your attention, making it impossible to focus. This, oddly enough, is a perfect metaphor for our daily lives in this hyper-connected world. Our minds are the room and the clamor is the endless stream of opinions, advice, notifications, and demands fighting for our attention. It's exhausting, isn't it? Now, let's talk about a somewhat radical idea, the power of ignoring. Yes, ignoring. Often seen through a negative lens, ignoring is typically associated with rudeness or indifference. But what if I told you it's actually a superpower in disguise, not the turn invisible and fly kind of superpower, but something potentially life-changing? Ignoring isn't about fostering negativity, it's about selectively tuning into what truly matters. Much like focusing on that one conversation in the noisy room. At the heart of this concept is autonomy, our right and capacity to make our own choices. 
In an age where we're bombarded with information and opinions from every direction, it's easy to lose track of our own voices. Think about it. When was the last time you made a decision purely based on your own thoughts and feelings, without external input? Hard to remember, right? That's because, more often than not, we let the voices around us dictate our choices, from what we wear to how we feel about certain topics. Enter Ralph Waldo Emerson, a 19th century philosopher and poet who championed the idea of self-reliance. Emerson wasn't antisocial or advocating for a hermit lifestyle. Rather, he believed in the importance of trusting our inner voices amidst the cacophony of societal expectations and opinions. His essay, Self-Reliance, is a call to arms for individuality and personal conviction, reminding us that the only person's expectations we need to meet are our own. Embracing the autonomy of ignoring doesn't mean you stop listening to everyone else completely. It's about being selective. It's about learning to filter through the noise to find what truly resonates with you. In practice, this could mean taking a break from social media to reconnect with your own thoughts or politely declining advice that doesn't align with your values. It's about recognizing that, while others may have valuable input, your own insights and feelings are just as important. What's liberating about this approach is the freedom it brings. Suddenly, you're not a leaf tossed about by the winds of others' opinions. You're the captain of your ship, navigating through the sea of voices with purpose and direction. This doesn't just apply to big life decisions. It starts with the small, everyday choices we make. Choosing to skip that article everyone's talking about if it doesn't interest you or not feeling compelled to join in on every trend. By cultivating this selective engagement, you start building a life that's authentically yours, not a patchwork quilt of societal expectations and other people's ideas. And in doing so, you find that your decisions, your mistakes and your successes feel more meaningful because they're truly yours. That's the beauty of embracing the autonomy of ignoring. It empowers you to live a life that's not just a reaction to the world around you, but a reflection of your innermost self. Section 2. Mental and Emotional Well-Being How the art of ignoring plays a crucial role here. Imagine you're juggling, not balls or flaming torches, but dozens of smartphones, each buzzing with notifications, messages, calls, and the endless barrage of social media updates. Sounds stressful, right? That's because it is. Our brains aren't wired to handle constant digital stimulation without consequence. It's like trying to drink from a fire hose. Eventually, you're going to get overwhelmed. This is where the power of ignoring becomes not just beneficial, but essential. It's about setting boundaries with our digital lives to protect our mental and emotional health. The constant bombardment of information, the relentless demand for our attention, can lead to a state of perpetual stress and anxiety. It's like being in a crowded room where everyone is shouting for your attention at the same time. It's exhausting and, frankly, impossible to process everything with the depth and attention it sometimes deserves. Research has shown that excessive engagement, especially on social media, can significantly impact our mental health. It's not hard to see why. Social media, for all its benefits of connection and community, also presents a curated version of reality. It's a highlight reel of other people's lives, often leaving us feeling inadequate jealous, or simply not good enough. It's a breeding ground for comparison and discontent, fostering a sense of isolation in a space that's ironically meant to bring us together. Ignoring in this context isn't about burying your head in the sand. It's about choosing where to direct your attention deliberately. It's acknowledging that not every notification deserves your immediate response. Not every email needs to be answered the second it lands in your inbox. And not every piece of content shared on social media 
needs to consume your energy and peace of mind. Think of it as curating your mental environment. Just as you might declutter your home to create a more peaceful space, ignoring allows you to declutter your mind. It's about creating a mental space where you can focus on what truly matters to you, whether that's spending quality time with loved ones, pursuing a hobby, or simply enjoying a moment of peace and quiet. Moreover, this selective engagement can lead to a deeper appreciation for the interactions and content we do choose to engage with. When we're not spread so thin, trying to keep up with everything and everyone, we can bring a more focused, present and meaningful involvement to the activities and people that matter most to us. Ignoring is a tool for mental and emotional conservation. It's recognizing that our attention and emotional bandwidth are finite resources and that we have the power and the right to protect them. By doing so, we're not only safeguarding our mental health, but also fostering a richer, more fulfilling life, both online and off. Section 3. Fostering Meaningful Connections Fostering Meaningful Connections In a world where our social networks stretch wider than ever before, it's ironically easy to feel disconnected. With every like, comment and share, we're ostensibly closer, yet the depth of these connections often leaves much to be desired. It's as if we're skimming across the surface of a vast ocean, never diving deep to discover the treasures below. Here's where the art of selective ignoring comes into play, guiding us to invest in relationships that truly matter. Think about your daily interactions, both online and off. How many are meaningful? How many people do you interact with out of habit, obligation, or a fear of missing out, rather than genuine interest or affection? It's an uncomfortable question because it forces us to confront the possibility that we're spreading ourselves too thin, scattering our attention across too many superficial connections, leaving little room for the ones that could truly enrich our lives. Now, consider the possibility of shifting that dynamic of gently letting go of the noise to make space for the music. This isn't about shunning society or cutting ties in a dramatic fashion. It's about mindfulness in our interactions, recognizing which relationships make us feel valued, supported, and connected on a deeper level. It's about acknowledging that while it's okay to have acquaintances, it's the deeper, more meaningful relationships that truly shape our lives. By consciously choosing to ignore, or at least minimize, our engagement with less meaningful connections, we open up the bandwidth to nurture the relationships that do matter. It's about quality over quantity. This shift doesn't happen overnight. It starts with small decisions. Choosing to have a coffee with a friend over scrolling through social media, Picking up the phone for a meaningful conversation instead of texting out of convenience, spending quality time with family without the constant buzz of notifications. The beauty of this approach is the reciprocity it fosters. When we invest our time and energy into relationships that matter, we're more likely to receive the same level of engagement in return. It's a virtuous cycle. The more we nurture these connections, the stronger they become, providing us with a support system that's both resilient and rewarding. And here's the kicker. As we deepen our relationships with others, we deepen the relationship with ourselves. Engaging meaningfully with others holds up a mirror to our own selves, reflecting our values, our passions, and our growth. It challenges us to be better friends, partners, and family members. It prompts us to evaluate what we bring to the table and how we can contribute to our relationships in a way that's both authentic and nurturing. Fostering meaningful connections is about finding your tribe, those individuals with whom you share a mutual respect, understanding and affection. It's about discovering those rare souls who make you feel heard, seen and valued, not for what you do or what you can offer, but simply for being yourself. 
And in a world that often feels too busy, too superficial, and too disconnected, these connections are not just nice to have. They're essential to our well-being and our sense of belonging. So let's make a conscious effort to prioritize these connections, to cultivate them with the care and attention they deserve. Because at the end of the day, it's the depth of our relationships that defines the richness of our lives. And that, my friends, is worth more than all the likes in the world. Section 4. Personal Growth Through Selective Engagement This idea, at its core, is about the deliberate choice to focus our attention and energies on what truly matters to us, even in the face of a world that never stops buzzing with distractions, opinions and demands. Picture this. You're working on a project that you're passionate about. It could be anything from writing a book, starting a business, or even learning a new skill. But in the background, there's always a buzz. Social media notifications, the latest trends, news cycles, advice from every corner, and so on. It's like being in a room filled with televisions, each playing a different channel loudly. In such chaos, Focusing on your project is akin to trying to hear a whisper in a storm. This is where the power of selective engagement comes in. It's about consciously choosing to mute those televisions, to turn down the volume on the world's noise, and to focus on that whisper. It's not about ignorance, but about clarity and the recognition that not everything deserves your attention. Selective engagement is an act of reclaiming your power. The power to decide where your energies go. The power to choose focus over fragmentation. It's about understanding that in a world where being busy is often worn as a badge of honor. The true measure of progress is not how much you've done, but how meaningful those actions are. Consider the stories of people who've achieved remarkable things. More often than not, you'll find a common thread, a period of intense focus and dedication where they chose to ignore the distractions of their world to concentrate on their goals. These stories aren't just about talent or luck, they're about the power of selective engagement. But how do you practice this in your own life? It starts with being mindful of what you allow in your space, mentally, emotionally, and physically. It means setting boundaries with technology, learning to say no, and most importantly, spending time with your own thoughts. It's about finding value in solitude and silence, where the most profound growth often happens. Selective engagement also means being intentional with your social interactions. It's choosing quality over quantity, opting to spend time with people who inspire you, challenge you, and support your growth. It's about engaging with content and conversations that add value to your life, that make you think, and that move you forward. And yes, there will be times when this means missing out on things, when you'll have to ignore the latest fad, skip the party everyone is talking about, or step back from the endless cycle of news and drama. But in doing so, you'll find something far more valuable, a sense of purpose, of direction, and of peace. Selective engagement is not a one-time decision, but a continuous process of making choices that align with your values and your goals. It's about regularly asking yourself, does this matter to me? Is this where I want to invest my energy? And it's about having the courage to act on those answers. In embracing selective engagement, You'll find that not only do you achieve more of what truly matters to you, but you also become a beacon for others. Your focus and dedication can inspire those around you to consider where they're directing their attention and energies. And in a world that's always shouting for attention, your choice to engage selectively is a powerful statement about who you are and what you value. So let's commit to this practice of selective engagement, to tuning out the noise and focusing on what truly matters. Because in the end, the quality of our lives is not determined by how much we do, but by how meaningful those actions are. Let's choose depth over distraction, 
purpose over popularity and let's grow in ways we never thought possible. Section 5. Strategies for Healthy Ignoring In wrapping up our exploration of the benefits of ignoring people, it's crucial to delve into strategies for healthy ignoring. This isn't about fostering a dismissive attitude or building walls around ourselves, but about cultivating a mindful approach to our interactions and engagements. The essence of healthy ignoring lies in the art of discernment, knowing what to let in and what to leave out, ensuring that our mental and emotional spaces are places of growth, not clutter. Imagine your mind as a garden just as a gardener selectively chooses what to plant, nurturing the flowers and removing the weeds, you too can cultivate your mental garden. This begins with the awareness that not everything deserves your attention. In an age where information is abundant and opinions are rife, the skill of selective focus is invaluable. It's about recognizing that while the world buzzes with endless chatter, you have the agency to tune into the frequencies that resonate with your values and aspirations. So how do you implement these strategies in your daily life? First, it's about setting boundaries, especially with technology. In a world where our devices are the gateways to infinite interactions, learning to step away is crucial. This might mean designated tech-free hours or using app limiters to reduce the constant influx of information. It's not about shunning technology, but about using it in a way that serves you, not drains you. Next, consider the power of the word no. In a culture that often equates busyness with importance, saying no is a radical act of self-preservation. It's about recognizing that your time and energy are finite resources. And that saying no to one thing means saying yes to something else. Perhaps something that aligns more closely with your goals and well-being. Another vital aspect of healthy ignoring is mindfulness. Being present with your thoughts and feelings, acknowledging them without automatically acting on them. This means not jumping on every thought that passes through your mind or reacting to every emotion. Mindfulness allows you to observe the internal and external noise without getting swept away by it. Engaging with content and conversations thoughtfully is also key. It's about choosing quality over quantity. Engaging with material that challenges, inspires or educates you, rather than mindlessly consuming content. This selective engagement enriches your life, sparks creativity and fosters learning. Lastly, spend time in reflection and solitude, in the silence. Away from the world's opinions and demands, you find your own voice. Solitude offers the clarity and space needed to reflect on your values, make decisions that reflect your true self, and chart a course that is authentically yours. In adopting these strategies for healthy ignoring, you're not creating a life of isolation, but one of intentional engagement. You're choosing to fill your life with interactions and activities that add value, bring joy, and promote growth. This selective focus is not a barrier, but a gateway, a way to open up more fully to the experiences and connections that truly matter. By practicing healthy ignoring, we're not shutting out the world. We're simply choosing to live in it more wisely, more purposefully, and ultimately, more fully. As we reach the end of our journey through the landscape of the benefits of ignoring people, it's time to reflect on the profound insights and strategies we've explored. This isn't just about learning to navigate the incessant noise of our daily lives, but about embracing a more intentional and mindful way of living. The essence of our discussion isn't to advocate for a life of solitude or to suggest a cold shoulder to the world. Instead, it's about recognizing the power and peace that come from selective engagement and understanding that the richness of our lives is deeply rooted in the choices we make about where to invest our attention and energy. 
In a world that often feels like it's shouting at us from all directions, the act of ignoring is not an act of defiance, but one of self-care and wisdom. It's about discerning what truly matters, about finding the courage to step away from the things that drain us and toward the things that nourish our souls. This journey has highlighted the undeniable truth that in the quiet spaces we create, by ignoring the unnecessary, we find the strength, clarity and peace to live lives of purpose and joy. But remember, this is not a journey you walk alone. As we've traversed these ideas together, we've shared a collective exploration into what it means to live deliberately in an often indeliberate world. The stories, strategies and philosophies we've discussed are not just lessons but invitations. Invitations to engage with life on terms that resonate with your deepest self. So, as we conclude, I encourage you to carry forward the insights and practices we've discussed. Experiment with them, adapt them to your life, and observe the changes they bring. Embrace the power of ignoring, not just as a tactic for navigating the world, but as a profound strategy for personal growth and happiness. And most importantly, let's keep the conversation going. Share your experiences, challenges and successes with ignoring the noise and focusing on what matters. Your journey, your insights and your stories are invaluable. Not just to your own growth, but to the collective wisdom of all who are walking this path alongside you. Thank you for being part of this exploration. May the peace and clarity you find through the art of ignoring illuminate your path forward and may you live every day with intention, purpose and joy. Here's to a life richly lived, not by the quantity of our engagements, but by the quality of our presence and focus. Let's step into the world with renewed perspective, ready to embrace the beauty and richness of a life lived truly and deeply.